Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. And welcome to part two of our Ditch the Disc series, in which we digitise our collections of physical media to provide a best of both worlds option in which we can continue to own physical discs, yet archive them in favour of digital versions we create. In part one, we archived our collection of operating systems, applications, utilities, games, encyclopedias, clip art, photographs and fonts. In this episode, we will be focusing exclusively upon our collection of movies, and again converting them for playback as a single file. We will return in part 3 to archive our music collection, as our CDs will also be archived. So join us as once again we ditch the discs. In order to create our video files, we need to install two pieces of free software. The first, DVD Fab, is used to break the encryption which otherwise prevents discs being ripped, which means copied to a hard drive. The second, Handbrake, is used to amalgamate the files ripped from the disc into a single video. Let's begin by installing DVD Fab. We open our browser and navigate to www.dvdfab.cn. From there, follow the download link. In this instance, we are downloading to a 64-bit Windows PC, but be aware that versions also exist for 32-bit versions of Windows and Mac OS. If you are unsure as to which version of Windows you are running, we covered this in part 3 of our Windows installation tutorial series. We click on free download and the download commences. Once concluded, we click on the upward pointing arrow in Google Chrome, which turns downward, revealing a menu from which we select the option to open, which runs the installer. In a typical Windows installation, this action will prompt the appearance of the user account control feature. As this prompt has clearly arisen as a consequence of our actions, we can safely click yes to proceed, and are instructed to click to install. Before we do that, we've closed the open browser window, solely in order that we can focus upon the installation process. We note a small, largely grayed option to customise, in the lower right corner, so we click it to examine our options. A drop down menu appears, with a pre ticked option to accept the user license agreement, and we leave this as is. We could also accept the default installation path, but regular viewers will know that we like to keep a highly structured installation directory, so once again we customise the installation path to our liking. We also untick the option to join the user experience program, as that isn't something which we are interested in. The application performs a brief check and begins further downloading from the web. The process can be monitored via a percentage indicator as well as a progress bar. Once the download has concluded, the installation phase commences and again is visually represented. Upon completion, shortcuts will be added to the desktop and a web page will load, confirming the conclusion of the installation and offering discounts on the paid version. Although, we repeat that this tutorial can be performed in its entirety without payment being made. We are now in a position to start DVD Fab, so we click the option to do so. Note that the program connects to the internet, presumably to check licensing information, and this attempt raises a flag with Windows Defender Firewall. We check that this is applicable purely to private networks, before selecting Allow Access to proceed. We are reminded that DVD Fab is a commercial product, but this tutorial uses purely free tools, so we select the option to try. On first run, we are invited to choose a module to run. We are also advised that hovering our mouse over each module will provide us with a description of that module's functions. Note that for this tutorial, we will use copy mode, as this mode typically remains available to us beyond the expiry of the trial period. We will use Handbrake in place of some of the other functions which will not be available to us once the trial expires. For reference, here are the descriptions of Ripper, Converter and Creator. From the various copy modes available, we will use Full Disk, although Main Movie is also useful in certain scenarios. We are now taken to the main window and are ready to insert a disk. We will return here shortly, but first we will install Handbrake which is the second free utility which we will use in this tutorial. Once again, we open our browser and navigate to handbrake.fr, 
where again, we select the link to download for 64-bit Windows systems. Although again, we note the availability of Handbrake for alternative platforms. Handbrake downloads quickly, and we again click the upward pointing arrow in Google Chrome, which turns downward, generating a menu offering the opportunity to open. As before, clicking on that open prompts the appearance of the user account control dialog, and again, we select yes to proceed. The setup procedure once again commences, and we have closed down the browser window to allow us to focus solely upon the installation procedure. We click next to proceed, and are taken to the license agreement screen, where once again acceptance is compulsory in order to proceed. We select I agree. We then select our installation path. The default is an entirely acceptable option, and novice users can simply opt to click install here. In keeping with our tradition, we modify the installation path to our liking before also selecting install. The installation then commences, with a progress bar moving from left to right, and below that a breakdown of the individual components of the installation. Upon completion, an icon is added to the desktop, and we click finish to conclude the installation phase. Running the program from its icon, we are taken to the main window, which is ready to receive the output from the files created by DVD-Fab. We have now installed both of the tools required for this project. We will now return to DVD Fab to rip a disc. In fact, we will rip two types of disc in this project. We will rip a movie from a Blu-ray disc, and episodes of a TV show from a DVD. The aim here is to show each type of disc and both types of content. We run DVD Fab from the start menu, and it loads as before. We again click try, and note the customization options offered at the following screen, before clicking OK to proceed. We are now returned to the main window, and are in copy mode. We insert a Blu-ray, in this instance Solo, a Star Wars story. There follows a period of several seconds, or even a minute and upward, as the disc is read. Eventually, the disc is ready, and we are ready to start. Note that the artwork from the movie has replaced the standard backdrop, we aren't ready to start yet. We need to set a destination where DVD Fab will save its files. As this is a Blu-ray, and we are ripping all of it, that requires over 40 gigabytes of storage space, a not inconsequential amount. We click on the icon labelled Save as Movie Folder, and look for a drive with over 40 gigabytes free. As our C drive has insufficient capacity, we click on our E drive, labelled Video, before clicking Select Folder. We now note that the save to location has successfully changed to our eDrive. Other users will have potentially different preferences here. Now, we note that we are converting our full disk to BD25, but, in doing so, are sacrificing around half the data. To change that, we move to the small advanced settings option, which we click, in turn revealing these options. We click on the output drop-down, where we change away from the default option of BD25 to our preference of BD50. With BD50 now selected, we click OK to return to the main window. This time we are fully configured and truly ready to start, so we click the Start button. This prompts a box advertising the mobile app, which we simply click OK to move beyond. We can also suppress future appearances of this box by ticking Don't Show Again. In the trial version, we are also encouraged to purchase the paid version, but we simply click continue here. Although we cannot guarantee how every future version of DVD Fab will function, all versions to date have permitted the procedure used in this tutorial to function beyond the expiry of the trial period. The ripping process begins, and it will be lengthy. It can be monitored using the progress bar and percentage indicator. All video encoding is resource intensive and time consuming. Even with a recent i7 processor, M.2 drive for receiving ripped files, and a speedy Blu-ray drive, this part of the task took over 30 minutes. Taking a break here is recommended. Eventually, the first processing phase will conclude. Don't be alarmed if the indicator suddenly reverts to 2%, as the process is actually very close to completion. The main window will show copy process completed successfully, and a pop-up window will follow, providing the same information. We click OK here, and the disk will be ejected. 
As we no longer need the physical disc, it can be safely filed away, and we have ditched the disc, although we still have distance yet to run. During the trial period, we are again met with a browser window advertising the paid version, and again, we simply close this window. We return to the main application window, which shows our success. We can now click to close, and the application seeks confirmation of our intention to do so. We simply click OK here, and we are returned to the Windows desktop. What have we achieved so far? We open File Explorer and navigate to the drive where we have stored the files. We see a new directory named Full Disk and open to review its content. We see the files from the solo disk and can inspect them. So we have an archive of the disk and we could simply store this for future use. But what we really want is a viewable copy of the movie as a single file. This is where Handbrake comes in. We return to our desktop and run Handbrake from the start menu. Handbrake's main window invites us to open a folder or file. As we have just created a folder, let's navigate to it. First we click on Folder, then a dialog box appears. We navigate to the E drive where we saved our files from DVD Fab. We double click to open the full disk directory where we find the solo directory. As this is the folder we need, we click select folder. Handbrake will now scan all of the video tracks in the folder. This will include the main movie, bonus features, trailers and menus. Having performed the scan, we are taken to the main window. Our first task is to select which title we are going to encode. We know that our main movie is one of 19 titles discovered during the scan, but which one? The numbers in brackets are video lengths represented in hours, minutes and seconds. As we are looking for a feature film, we know that it is of 2 hours, 14 minutes and 46 seconds in duration. Anything shorter is not our film and can be immediately discounted. This reduces our options to three titles, including the default. We can further use the arrows under the preview window to see 10 images from the title in sequence. Again, this would indicate that we have the correct visuals. What about the audio, which might be foreign language, commentary or audio described? For that, we can select preview for a sample rendering. We need a copy of VLC Media Player installed to take advantage of this function. We can select a specific device for our intended output, but we take a longer term view of this and prefer to opt for a generic output which can be played back on anything from a projection screen to a mobile phone. In this regard, general profiles are our preference and Fast 1080p30 is our preset of choice. You may wish to experiment with other quality options, although note that again, this is a time consuming experience. With our settings in place, we browse for a file location. This is where we will save the single file representing the entire movie. With our presets, and with average movie durations, we can expect an output file of between 3 and 6 gigabytes, so ensure that the drive has sufficient space available. As you will appreciate, we are reducing a 41 gigabyte Blu-ray to a 6 gigabyte file, and this is the only time in this series in which we will use a lossy compression method. We navigate to our downloads folder for this purpose and name the output file Solo A Star Wars Story. The title is now shown on the Save As bar. Note that the file type will be MP4, our format of choice. We will cover default file format in more depth later in the tutorial. If we had more video to process, we could add them to a queue, and we will also explore this option later. As we are simply looking to encode one video at this stage, we select Start Encode to begin. A short first pass is performed as the prelude to a much longer encode. The second pass begins. Again, this process can take a significant amount of time depending upon the power of the machine performing the processing. Use the information provided to gauge the speed of the process, but budget for an hour upward in the case of Blu-ray rips. There is an option to configure the device to shut down at the conclusion of the process should you need to start the process and allow it to proceed unobserved. A small notification is provided once the queue has been processed, and navigating to our E drive, we see that we have achieved our objective of a single file containing the entire movie, which we can play back in any compatible MP4 player and view our movie. The file can be copied, moved and deleted like any other file.
and played back on a range of devices. Again, we reiterate the advice given in part 1 that with knowledge comes responsibility and this technique should be applied for nothing more than personal use. Please comply with local laws. We've now dealt with Blu-rays and movies. We turn our attention to DVDs and TV series. Our strategy is very similar and we commence by running DVD Fab. Again, we select the option to try at the introductory screen before selecting try a second time at the screen which follows. At this juncture, we insert our DVD, which in this instance is disc 1 of season 2 of The Handmaid's Tale. As before, there is a brief phase of initial processing lasting around a minute, before we are brought to the main window, with artwork from the series as a backdrop. We again configure the output folder by clicking on the icon to save as movie folder. We navigate to our e-directory, where we will again save the output files, although we note a significant reduction in the storage space required. Whereas our Blu-ray required 41GB, our DVD will require just under 5. With our output folder set, we return to the Advanced Settings menu, where we find that DVD 5 is the default output type. We click on the drop-down menu and change that setting to DVD 9, in order to obtain maximum data from the disc. With the setting applied, we click OK to return to the main screen. With the settings adjusted, we click Start to proceed, and again click OK to pass through the mobile app notification screen. We click Continue to pass through the trial notification screen, and the ripping process is underway, with the progress bar indicating the status of the operation. Once again, be aware that this can take some considerable time, and take a break or perform other activities if necessary. Given the lesser volume of data, this should take significantly less time than the Blu-ray. Once complete, the pop-up will provide notification, and the main screen will show success. At this point we can ditch the disc and put it into long-term storage. We can also close the application and click OK on the confirmation screen. Thus far, the steps have exactly paralleled those performed in ripping the movie. However, there is a divergence once we enter Handbrake, which we again run from the desktop. At the main screen, we choose the option to select a folder, and from the selection window which appears, we again navigate to the location of the files ripped using DVD Fab. We open the full disk directory, where we find our Handmaid's Tale disk folder. With the folder selected, we click on the Select Folder option. Handbrake again scans the folder and finds 7 video files. Once in the main window, we click the drop down menu to reveal the video files, and our detective work begins. From the length in hours, minutes and seconds, we can eliminate titles 21 and 22, which at under 15 seconds are clearly not full episodes. We can also eliminate title 29, which at 3 and a quarter hours is clearly an amalgamation of the four main titles. That leaves titles 30, 31, 32 and 33. From the DVD insert, we are aware that disc 1 contains 4 episodes, so that fits perfectly. The only issue is sequencing, as the titles may not always be stored in chronological order, but again we are fortunate here. We select title 30, which should be episode 1, and the visual preview immediately and unmistakably confirms that. We now need to confirm a destination for the final video file for the episode, so we click browse. Then we navigate to our downloads folder, where the final file will be saved. We type in a title, and a consistent format of series name, season number, episode number, and episode title. We click save, although this saves our preferences rather than any actual video at this stage. With our preferences saved, we could simply click start encode to encode only this episode, but as there are four episodes on the disc, we will place them in a queue to encode together. We click add to queue, and note that our queue now contains one item. We can click to show the queue and see it in place. Now we move to episode 2. As title 30 was episode 1, it's reasonable to conclude that title 31 will be episode 2. We select title 31, note its preview, and click browse to select the destination location. We note that although we have one item in the queue, there is nothing in the destination to show us this, but this is entirely normal. We therefore provide a name for episode 2's file and move on. But here we encounter a problem. 
We have previously been saving our files as MP4, but now the default selection is .m4v. We do not want to introduce inconsistent file formats, so we need to change the settings. We select Tools, then Preferences. In the Preferences window, we navigate to Output Files, and click on the drop-down menu next to MP4 File Extension, changing it using the drop-down to always use MP4. With the option now selected for future files, we return to the main menu, where we find that our current episode will still save as an M4V file. To clear this, we select another title, in this case reverting to title 30, which returns us to the title we have already saved. Then click back again to title 31, and now we see that it will save in our desired MP4 format. We are required to re-enter the file name, and when we click save, we now have the MP4 file ready to add to the queue. We therefore select Add to Queue, and note that the queue now contains two items, which we can preview. We close the queue window, and with the output format issue now resolved, it's plain sailing and repetition to the end. We select Title 32, browse for a destination location, provide a name, save, and add to queue, noting that there are now three items in the queue. We move to the final title, numbered 33, browse for a destination location, provide a name, save, and add to queue. There are now four files in the queue, and nothing more can be extracted from this disk. We could repeat the process, including the DVD fab ripping, for all remaining disks in the series, but for now, let's concentrate on these episodes. We show the queue. Each of our source and destination files are shown. It's always worth a final check to ensure that everything is correctly sequenced, named and numbered, before clicking Start Queue. The queue begins processing, as each file is addressed in turn. Once complete, we are notified that the queue is finished. And, having repeated the process for every disk in the series, we now have 13 video files, which can be viewed on this device, or exported to another, and can be copied, moved and deleted just like any other file. With patience and time, an entire library can be moved from disk to far more convenient and accessible storage locations. Join us in the concluding part of this series when we archive our music library. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the Tech Fix Flicks YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official Tech Fix Flicks Twitter account. Until your next Tech Fix, goodbye.